Hi everyone and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you by Foodland. I'm Alana Smith. Mark Bickley couldn't join me today, but we'll hear from him shortly. Of course, we are looking forward to The Crow's big clash tomorrow with the D's in Alice Springs. Coming up in this Round 10 edition of The Race Is On, the rush to get the best seats every week, and the game's changing. So, what about the rules? But first, the Crows' visit to Alice Springs this weekend reinforces the club's drive to establish a strong presence through Australia's central corridor from Adelaide to Darwin. All AFL clubs face the challenge of broadening their supporter base and expanding commercial opportunities. And the Crows see great potential in a vast, largely untapped market to the north. Sends it inside 50, Randall. What a mark by Chelsea Randall. Yeah, it's a really important partnership for the football club and it started in somewhat unusual circumstances with the Adelaide Footy Club needing to prove to the AFL that we had sufficient talent to fill the team and be competitive in the inaugural AFLW season and it's now become something far more significant than that and you know we've got obviously our AFL men's team has played in Darwin last year, we're playing in Alice Springs this weekend uh, and the AFLW program's gone from strength to strength. So a notable goal kicker in four games this year, Riley Knight, for four and Riley Knight delivers that. Lots of people are putting their flag in the ground um, you know, in the, through the Northern Territory and there are several academy programs that other clubs run but you know, certainly through the establishment of our, um, our partnership through the IFLW we've got uh, a really significant wide ranging comprehensive program of activity and uh, we've got development programs running for you know, young boys and girls um, with the Michael Long Centre for Excellence. Um, we've obviously got a number of our IFLW girls are playing in the um, NT Thunder team that's competing in the BFLW. A long way out to half back and that'll do it. The Crows keep their season alive. I've spoken regularly about the need for us to diversify um, our operations and you know, our revenue streams and, and just our general areas of business. And you know, last year we did that through the purchase of an esports team. Um, there's some other um, uh, exciting initiatives on the horizon and um, some of them are at market development which is I suppose you know the AFL NT and Northern Territory partnership is is one of those and some of them are about fan development um, and looking for fans in different different sports that like esports and we'll continue to do that and if that helps to provide a, a strong and sustainable and successful football club then you know, it's important for us. Kangaroo Sam Gibson made his long-awaited Crows debut last weekend. The off-season recruit was initially picked to play in round one, but a last-minute hamstring injury delayed the start to his year. In this chat, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, Gibson reflects on what it was like to wear the tricolours for the first time. Good. It was, um, as you say, probably eight weeks too late, but it's it, it's sort of while I was integrating the club and, and you sort of form friendships and bonds with guys, you don't really get that tight bond until you play together. So that was really good that we could play together and, and play in a win, so it was really memorable. Now the surprise of today came as delisted kangaroo Sam Gibson found a home at Adelaide. The perspective I gained from being delisted at the end of last year and you stare down the barrel of footy mortality and think maybe I'm never going to be able to play again. So I guess I come this year with a bit of determination to to achieve something but also that realisation that I'm really lucky to still be in the system and, and doing what I love. Decides to go by hand to get them inside the 50. Gibson got a fair piece of it. Yeah, when I sort of came into the AFL system I was working full time and playing VFL so my life was pretty busy. So the ability to, to one, appreciate that life can be pretty tough if you're not in the AFL system so all the more reason to do what's right and hang on to it. And the Crows know first hand how good Gibson is at this role. He was the one that shut down Rory Sloan round seven last year when he was playing for the Kangas, kept him to 18. Sort of came across here to play footy and um, play at the pointy end of the year and, and I firmly believe that we're in a good position to challenge at that end of the year so yeah it was the big picture throughout the whole injury was, was just get back because there's a lot of footy to be played and a lot of really important footy so yeah that was that was always in the back of my mind. 
there seems to be a rising chorus of complaints about congestion and ultra-defensive tactics in the AFL. Fans, commentators, even a few coaches are joining in the criticism. So, earlier in the week, we asked Mark Bickley for his view. Thanks, Alana. Now, the state of the game has been very much a talking point over the past few weeks, particularly after I think it was round six when there was a low-scoring round, not many great games, and it seems everyone had a solution to how they could fix the game. And there was things like reducing the number of players on the field to putting the, the oval into zones and making some radical changes to what we've known football for a long time. For me, I've always been a fan of letting the game sort itself out, and fortunately, in recent weeks we've seen some really good games. The one of the Gabba uh, between Collingwood and Brisbane 37 goals kicked. It was a magnificent game, free flowing, high scoring we love that. Not as high as scoring but another great game of course was a Sydney v Hawthorne Friday night match which went all the way down to the wire and of course who could forget the showdown uh, a couple of weeks back where almost 30 goals were kicked in that game a couple of lead changes very very late so for me I don't think footy's going that bad. Do we need to make some slight changes well maybe we can look at it towards the end of the season but I'm against any making too many radical changes that you know go a step away from well what we've become to know and what we've seen for footy for a long time that's my thoughts Alana back to you thanks Bix I think your thoughts are mirrored by the AFL which says if there are any rule changes they won't happen until the end of the year well still to come on the Crow Show up there with the best of them and even heroes have their idols. Flyers have a special place in the history of our game and the name Robran is synonymous with great grabs. First Barry, then his son Matthew, thrilled fans with their aerial acrobatics. In this segment, brought to you by Flight Centre, we turn back the clock to round 18, 2000, to a classic moment against Geelong when the dual premiership player showed his pedigree. I wonder if he will have a shot here. Well, it's got pretty good distance, Robran right on the line! I do remember the mark well only because it was about the only hanger I ever took in my career. Um, so we're playing Geelong down at Canadian Park. Peter Vardy's had a shot from probably, I think mean, might have been 60 out. I don't know why I went for it, but I just decided to have a jump on Benny's shoulders and um, sort of got a nice little ride and fortunately it stuck and I sort of hit the ground in a little bit of disbelief because I didn't take too many hangers. So to have one, to have one stick and to take one was a, it was a nice feeling. Um, but I remember sort of Andrew Crowell sort of coming up and, and sort of giving me a few words of encouragement and while I was sitting on the ground. So yeah, I think they were all surprised, just as surprised as I was. Robert again, just outside the 50 and what we've seen today, not beyond his range. Certainly enjoy kicking a talk when the opportunity presented itself. At Amy Stadium against Geelong in the 97 semi-final, I think it was. Uh, I think it might have been inside the centre square. Uh, the noise from the crowd when it went through was something I'll never forget. So it was nice to get onto that one. Well, Matthew played one more year before a back injury forced his early retirement. Now, Brody Smith is building a legion of young fans each week through his Thomas Farms Junior Jam segment. Today, he's taken a different approach and it's produced a couple of surprises. We'll let him explain. Welcome to Junior Jam, brought to you by Thomas Farms. This week, the tables have turned and I've got Caitlin, Jack and Ella and they're going to ask me some questions, so I'm now in the hot seat. Away you go, guys. Who's up first? Who did you barrack for when you were a kid? Oh, I was a Port Adelaide supporter, unfortunately. My dad went for Port, so I went for Port, and then obviously got drafted to Crows and swapped straight away, but it took him four years. Four years to go for the Crows in a showdown. Out of every player when you were younger, who was your favourite player? To start with was Stuart Jew. I don't know if you remember him. Um, had a big left foot kick, so I loved watching him. And then um, Chris Judd, as I was getting older, I loved watching Juddy play, so I've got a bit of a man crush on Juddy. Do you have any tips for me as a defender? Yeah, me and Laddie get in trouble for this all the time in team meetings because we like to get the ball a lot and you know kick it, kick forward and try and kick goals. So 
um, you have to be a really good defender, so making sure your opponent doesn't get the ball and stop him from kicking goals. When you get the ball, just attack, as, attack as much as you can, make them defend you. What round do you think you will be back in? It's a good question. I've probably been asked that every day for about six months, so <laughs> um, I don't know is the honest answer. Um, I'm hoping that I can get in a two or three games, hopefully, before the season finishes, so then I'm ready to go for finals because um, hopefully we're up there again and we're trying to make another grand final. So I'm hoping I can be a part of the finals. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, Brady. Thanks for having me. Good job, kids. Now, we know youngsters everywhere have their heroes across all sports, whether it's cycling or surfing, netball or basketball. And big boys are no different. Crows players have their own idols in major overseas franchises in the NBA, NFL or EPL, and they never miss an opportunity to admire the skills of the international superstars. Have to be the king. The king himself, greatness, the LeBron James, the GOAT, I would say. He's an absolute superstar, followed him when he first came in. And then he went to Miami, and the boys got stuck into me because I jumped on board with him at Miami, and then he came back to Cleveland, and I came back with him. So I'm a basically LeBron James fan. I'm a, I'm a massive basketball fan, so um, Andrew Boat was always my, my uh, idol growing up, I guess, um, from that sense. And then as I've got older, I sort of love Paddy Mills and Joe Ingles. At, I guess um, at my time growing up, Andrew Boat was always the, the number one man, so I've always sort of stuck with him. And being a big centre, it's probably similar to how I would play if I was going to play basketball. My sporting idol is Tom Brady, who is a quarterback in the NFL for the New England Patriots. I originally just started following NFL and then um, he obviously wins a lot so he does, he's doing something right so I um, started looking into him a bit more and yeah his professionalism off the field in his uh, recovery, his diet and then his preparation for games and then on the field he's just a competitive beast who just loves winning and he's just full of passion. Even the very best have their idols. LeBron James for example named Kobe Bryant as his hero. Well, time now to take a break and come back down to earth. Then we'll look at the job all footballers hate and the helter-skelter of game day. Welcome back. If you're ever late leaving a game, you'll sometimes see a few players out on the ground doing some serious training. They'll be the emergencies who not only didn't play AFL but also missed out on the sample. However, they find there's no escape from the pain. The downside of being an AFL footballer when cleaners, ground staff and a few gloating rival supporters are your only company. The non-playing emergency is probably the most hated uh, hated role for the players. And Ruckman Riley O'Brien knows the feeling more than most. Saturday night at 8.30 there's probably other things we'd rather be doing, but nah, training's good so it um, prepares us as best we can. He's an emergency nearly every week as back up for Sam Jacobs. Joining him after the showdown were Lockie Murphy, Patrick Wilson and Darcy Fogarty. A little bit weird, the boys, there's a few Port fans at the game giving us a bit, so um, that was always good, but uh, no, nah, it was alright. It was The lights went out halfway through, which made it a bit hard. And thanks for joining us for another cracker here at Adelaide Oval. Emergencies prepare during the week as if they're going to play. We go to all the meetings during the week and the captains are on the day before the game, um, and then also go to the game, as always, two hours early, and then... I guess wait to see if anything happens. And when it doesn't, post-game training can be a lonely experience. Depending on who it is and, and when it is, uh, we'll involve some football, we'll involve some running, effectively trying to, to mimic some elements of the game, um, but obviously not quite the 13 or 14 or 15 Ks that they'll do in a game. But without the glare or the glamour, it's just a grind. It's a bit tough. Obviously we want to be playing, so it makes it a little bit hard, but uh, the training's good, it's good. We need, we need to do that. 
you have to feel for Riley O'Brien. Okay, next week is Indigenous Round, so don't delay getting the great new Guernsey for 2018. Designed by Wayne Miller's uncle, it represents Adelaide Oval and the 23 past and present Indigenous players who have represented the Crows. Head to the club website to order your own jumper or visit the Crowmania merchandise shop at Westlakes. Well, the loyalty and commitment of Crows fans knows no bounds. For instance, there are the hardy supporters who queue for hours before every home game to secure their favourite seats in the general admission area. We caught up with the early birds ahead of the Bulldogs clash and discovered there's a real sense of camaraderie. When you're on a mission, there's no time to waste. a bit of a dog fight to get a seat in there so yeah. it's a bit of argy -bargy once the gates open. it is yeah but lucky i'm small and i can get in there pretty quick so <laughs> nice. it's a good times the gates open two hours before the first bounce but queuing starts long before that much longer yeah i was the first one here yep so apart from the people that go to the northern gate oh you're at 6 30 this morning and as the crowd builds so do the friendships you, you see the same faces, you sit in the same areas and you see the same people. Well, there's a good group of people that come here early, right, so we have a good time together, have a good chat, and also to make sure I get the right seat that I want. Most people make a beeline for the Western Stand and, being creatures of habit, they target the same seat that gives them the best view. We always seem to like to be at the same seats, be in the same position. For others, the priority is to be close to facilities. That's the front fitted riding Bar. <laughs> it is a good group. There's no fights, there's no argument. People want to go in front of you. Yeah, it's all good, not a problem. But some fans do have a problem. I'm really shaking to stand all this time. I can't go and sit down because it's wet over there. Why don't they let people, as they come along, whoever coming first, get in? Let them in. I have separate lines for people with bags and lines with people without bags. Just get it through a little bit quicker. But regardless of the weather, the queues and the inevitable rush, they don't hesitate to front up every home game. If it means that we wait a bit longer for the Crows and they're going to win, that's fine. I'll wait for ages. Ages and ages. Now that's loyalty for you. Full marks to everyone who queued in the rain and cold before that Bulldogs game. When I return, we'll check out some fans' feedback and look for our face in the crowd. is ready to introduce a mid-year draft or trade next year with the aim of further assisting bottom teams. For example, a struggling club could swap a player for a better draft pick at season's end. The proposal is not without its critics, so what do the fans think? I'm not for it. I like to see the players stay for one club. Um, yeah, I'm not for it. I, mean, I can't, can't see them playing for a different team mid-season. Yeah. I don't know. I think that make it pretty unstable and all that, and then people will then just like sort of like be going between teams and everything like that. So yes. Yeah, I think it'd um, it'd be really interesting. I think uh, it'd add a lot of excitement. Different players playing for new teams. Um, yeah, I think it'd be good. Yeah, I think um, we follow soccer pretty much. So I think it's pretty it's needed. Strengthen the team. We've got injuries and stuff like that. Could be handy, especially if you got some. Um, uh, injuries in key positions like if you got a couple of rocks go down that really could be could be helpful. Don't like it at all. Why's that? Because I'm a Sample supporter and I think it would compromise that competition. Fair enough. Because that's predominantly where they're going to recruit from, isn't it? Staying with the fans and let's pick out face in the crowd. Okay, this week's lucky winner is you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and a merchandise pack courtesy of Toyota will be yours.
Well, that just about wraps up our show brought to you by Foodland. Don't forget, we take on Melbourne tomorrow afternoon. And remember, for all the latest news and interviews, go to the club website afc.com.au as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. As we mentioned, next week is Sir Doug Nichols' round and Mark Bickley will be back as we give special coverage to the contribution Indigenous players make not only to the Crows but to the game at all levels. Thanks for your company today. I look forward to joining you again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. See you then.